alone. Welcome to One Cool Thing, PC Mag's daily streaming show here on Facebook. I'm Matthew Buzzy. This is Jim Fisher. Uh, every day we bring you one cool thing that we're testing in the labs. Little little preview here of what it's going to be today. Um, if you're reading, if you're watching along, uh, Pete, Social Pete is reading the comment section. So anything, uh, questions, comments, any any just insights that you might have. Um, about the product or about us or about technology. Um, shoot them Pete's way, he'll read them out to us and we'll answer them as best we can. Um, if you're watching later on YouTube, leave a like, subscribe, but for now just come come hang out. Come uh, come chill with me and Jim. Jim, how's it going? It's going well. It's going We're all right. standing here looking at a Polaroid camera, yeah. making jokes about the Rockford Files. You know, yeah, it's a yeah. good a good Wednesday morning. Nice throwback. Yeah. Um, it's not Magnum, but you know what are we what are we gonna do? <laughs> There's only so much you can do. Um, a Polaroid camera, what what year is it, Jim? Where are we? It's what is happening? It's 2018, I think. Whoa. Uh, there you are. There I am. Uh, Pretty show exposure. This is the Polaroid Originals One Step Plus. This is the follow-up. It is does not replace the One Step 2, mm -hmm. which we reviewed earlier this year and actually debuted in 2017. The One Step Plus adds some plus things for another $60. It's $159.99. Uh, it uses the classic SX uh, six, the Polaroid. I'm sorry, the Polaroid 600 format square film, which is now sold as iType as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you can use either with this. Uh, made by Polaroid Originals. The iType packets are a little bit cheaper. I think they're Ooh. about 19, 18 or 19 dollars for a pack of eight shots, available in color or monochrome, and. One of the reasons they're a couple of dollars cheaper than the 600 film, which you can use in an old, old Polaroid mm -hmm. if you wanted to, uh, is that they don't have a battery. This has an internal lithium ion battery, which charges via a little micro USB port here on the back. Uh, handy. Handy, handy. So you do have that to concern. You do have to make sure the camera is charged. It does hold I a mean, charge for a couple. If you leave it batteries, charged, batteries it'll, hold right. it. it'll hold it for a few weeks without draining, but you right. do want to top it off before party or event. Um, I understand there's an app that works with the There's an with, app, there's an iOS the slash Android app okay. that basically communicates via Bluetooth and lets you do double exposures, light painting, long exposure, get away from the general ambient light sensor that's on here and really get nail your exposure in difficult lighting. You can use the app and, and meter and dial it okay. in like for the pro, the, for the pros with a real there. camera as they say. Um, but it's fine for the, the more casual user who may just it's, in fact want to point and shoot. It's also super point and shoot and, and the big advantage for the casual user is you've got this little switch up here. Mm. This is your, so you're locking in and actually changing. Is this a new iPhone, Jim? Portrait, mm -hmm. I hear talk of portrait mode. Well, yeah. Do we have an advanced preview today on Apple Day? <laughs> yes. This comes in this, yes. this sleek it's new old, It's an old school, you know, <laughs> using medium format size film, instant Genius. film. And you can kind of blur out backgrounds. It's hard to see here because the background's so dark, mm -hmm. but uh, it, it gets you a little more separation than you would with a normal Polaroid shot. Here we got one of Magnum, the PC Mag test dog, who is, uh, who's got a little bit of blur behind him. It's not, I mean, it's still like an F, shooting like F16. It's not sure. a super fast lens, but it's such a large negative and a longer focal length that you can, when focusing close, get a little separation behind your subject. Gotcha, very nice. Um, so if you're if you're tuning in, and you're seeing a camera like this for the first time, um, and you um, and you might think maybe a unique thing or only from yeah. Polaroid. Um, that's not that's not true. That's not that's not true. There's no, some, instant yeah. film stuff now. Uh, Polaroid Originals is has kind of they've taken the it started as the Impossible Project when mm -hmm. they called it the Impossible Project because a few years ago, and I need to look up how many years ago. It's probably more than a few. It seems like a few to me. It's probably closer to. This. Five to seven years ago, um, you know, you know, it's uh, they <laughs> Impossible bought the last Polaroid factory in Europe and wanted to start making the film because Polaroid had shut down operations. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, and I, I remember a couple photo keynotes ago, I went to a press conference and talked to their talked to their their tech people. Uh, the chemicals that they used for the old film was no were no longer made, so wow. they had to reverse engineer. They brought in the the CTO from Polaroid to be their CTO, the head chemist. Uh, to kind of reformulate. And the black and white film's really good. Mm. The color film still needs some work. It's yeah. better, it's much better than mm -hmm. it was in years past. Uh, but you still need to block it from light for the first few minutes of development, which is why when I snap a photo of our cooperative co-host Matthew Buzzy again here with the portrait mode, when it ejects, it's got this long frog it. tongue, it's called. Mm -hmm. uh, it's longer than the old Polaroids would have the similar black thing, but it would just 
it wouldn't wrap around the bottom of the negative. It would just kind of seal the light from getting in in the front. That's, that's pretty so neat. we usually block it for a couple minutes. Just a few minutes doesn't need much. We took this before the show, for example. We did take it for the show. And he peeled that I blocked off, it, so. and it's still going to take another ten minutes for it to fully develop the color film. It's mm. usually about fifteen to twenty minutes. And the other thing about the color film, <laughs> uh, this is something to be aware of. I found out the hard way uh -oh. is if you're shooting in temperatures. 50 degrees Fahrenheit or below, uh -huh. you'll start to pick up a little green color cast. Uh, yeah, so I, I was reviewing the One Step 2, the, the other mm -hmm. camera in the line, the $100 model, in February outside okay. in, you know, North Jersey, yeah. New York area. All my pictures were green. I'm like, what's wrong <laughs> what's with this wrong film? With this huh. So I shot some in inside and I'm like, no, the film's fine. Mm. And I, it's on their website somewhere buried. It does it's something fact, to be yeah. aware of. They recommend like, warming the keeping the camera in like a warm bag and taking <laughs> out taking shots and so that's something the black again the black and white materials don't have that issue right the black and white materials are really lovely and that's probably for someone who's really serious artistic photographer uh the black and white quality and also the fact that these negatives are larger significantly than uh the Insta fujifilm instax square which uh -huh. is fujifilm's in competing square format is the other reason to opt for the pricier more finicky polaroid, polaroid materials gotcha. we have a question does this have a flashback mode? A flashback mode? I don't know. Uh, I would have to ask Scott Bakula <laughs> if we can time travel within one, one, one's own lifetime for yeah. a flashback yeah, mode. So I don't know what that means. If you can clarify in the comments, please do. Please do, yeah. I'm not sure. Um, it's got a flash. It's got a flash. Flashback. Yeah, I'm not. I, I was like, that must be some camera term that only Jim would know. No, it's <laughs> not. No, it's definitely not. <laughs> it's uh, also beyond you. Um, so this is. Uh, at 160, right? That's a yep. bit. Um, is that so? That's a higher step up from their other one. It's also a little more expensive than the Insex alternatives. Yeah, uh, Insex camera, Insex cam square cameras actually run from around this price up to 300. Okay. Uh, they're in the 150 to 200 range for the Lomo Instant Square or mm -hmm. the Fujifilm Instax SQ6, which is the analog version. The SQ10, which is Fujifilm's square format, which is actually a digital camera with a printer built in, uh, I think that retails for 300, but now it's selling for closer to two. Gotcha. So you're right in the ballpark. The, like I said, the, the, the entry level Polaroid originals is $100. The entry level, uh, can we scroll down here? Yeah. Let's just scroll down. Let's go down. Let's, so get, let's go to the facts. Instax Square, $106.59 for the SQ6 right now. $199 pretty, yeah. for the Lomo Instant Square, which I liked a little bit more because it's a little bit more enthusiast camera. The mm -hmm. Insect Square is a very fun point and shoot for casual users, although I think a lot of snap shooters might be better served with the SQ10 Fujifilm for square format because that is digital and you can print on demand. Okay. So you don't have to print every picture gotcha. with that. That's a nice little option. And it's got filters built in and other things. It's it's a, it's a neat little thing. And there are also printers you can buy from Fujifilm for the Insect materials that just print from your phone if gotcha. you don't want a camera for whatever reason. But it's more fun to shoot with a Polaroid. Right? Yeah, it's kind of or, kinda, or, yeah. or Instax. It's more fun to shoot with an instant, analog, right, yeah. instant camera, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so, how's the, is there is there much picture quality? I know like the film and the color development, and, but is there much picture quality difference between these and the? I, the, I couldn't the other tell. Ones? I couldn't really. It's really. it's hard to do control tests with these. Sure. Uh, the big quality difference for these are going to be that you can get close focus for the portraits because uh -huh. I would not be getting a, this sharp of a portrait at this distance with the regular one step simply because the lens doesn't focus that closely. Gotcha. So that, that handy slider may be the handy difference slider. between... Uh, and it's, so it's like landscape and or two people or one person. It's yeah, very, like the little icon. It's, it's two people it and a tree you know, or a little one person. Right. So, you know, one person with a, and it's even a head and shoulders there. It lets you know that's about the range you want to be for the portrait mode. Clever. And Clever it, iconography. I, you know, I, I was, these are, these are from my, from my 20 year high school reunion. Uh, so, you know, you can kind of see this was in a, in a, in a typical poorly lit, you sure. know, Friday night at a bar somewhere in Pennsylvania. Whereas this just now is under the, in the color, was in some bright yeah, studio actually, lights. Yeah, actually, we're getting the, that's, that's, so that's coming in that's very coming nicely. Yeah, the color is actually really nice on that. Uh, definitely better than previous generations. And uh, here we can kind of see the difference between two. One where I didn't block it long enough mm -hmm. and one where I did. And you can see the one where I didn't block it long enough is just a little washed out. Hmm. It's a good dog, though. He's a good dog. He's, he's a good dog, yeah, out of the way. He's, he's good. He's old. How is the, how do we think that one's coming along? 
Uh, Needs I think, more time. I think we can. The, we can. The, no, I can. I can take it off here. Oh my! <laughs> it's a quality photo. It's gonna. I'll say it's that. gonna have to. It's gonna need. Uh, it's gonna need know, some time to sit. Another ten minutes to actually really emerge <laughs> properly and get you the right colors, but it's a good expression. Yeah, for sure. It's, no, it's, that's, it's that's a, a trademark. It's a look. top ten Matt Buzzy expression. <laughs> I think. Put that on the on the rankings. Um, okay, so I did see while we were glancing back here. You did give it a three out of five. Three and a half. Three, three and a half, half out of five. Let's, rather, let's, sorry. We um, uh, we gave yeah that which is the same. We gave the regular one step two. Your cons are the things you mentioned. The yeah. expensive film, yeah. the, the color materials are a little, little finicky. Yeah, this is a big improvement over if you had the, the, the Polaroid Originals renamed itself Polaroid Originals. It used to be Impossible Project, which I mentioned. Mm -hmm. there, yeah, that whole that sounds it's fascinating. Pre its actually. previous camera was the i1, which was mm -hmm. like a $300, more forward thinking, futuristic thing, which had uh, it has some, some DNA shared. It had the Bluetooth control. Mm -hmm. It had a different type of viewfinder. It had one that clipped in magnetically to the top and just kind of gave you a little window view of your framing instead of sure. actually a glass optical viewfinder, which could be a little tricky to use because you needed to, to get it, get your eye kind of dead in there or else you were going to get your framing mm -hmm. off. And the real big problem with that camera, not, well, it was $300, right. uh, but also uh, its battery wouldn't hold a charge. Uh -huh. So I would sit it down for a few days and pick it up and it would be dead and I'd have to recharge it. That's not what you want. This is not, not a problem with this. This you will let you, it's got a little blinking LED light here next to the charge port to let you know when it's low. Time's, time's running short. And you can short. just top it off. And because nicely now it's, it's micro USB and everybody mm -hmm. seems to have a portable battery pack with them at all times, you can just plug it in and give nice it a quick addition. charge and get some shots out we of it. We have another question. So what would be your recommendation for someone who's buying an instant camera then? Like what's the main it's, one? It depends on who you are. If you're a very entry level basic user, mm. I like the Fujifilm Instax Mini 9, which is like $70. It uses the less expensive and smaller 1.8 by 2.4 inch film format okay. uh, Instax Mini that costs like 70 cents a shot. Uh, if you like a bigger format, if something more this size, mm -hmm. but not square, Fujifilm makes Instax Wide, which is also quite affordable, available in color and monochrome, just like the Instax Mini, Mini Film. And I like the Lomo Instant Wide camera for that, which I think is 200. So a little bit more than this. Mm -hmm. It's also a very kind of photo person camera. Right. Uh, if you are someone who's more casual and just wants to snapshot and don't worry about settings and more our double exposure is the more options, artistic. Yeah. Sounds more up your alley. Look at the Fujifilm stuff. The S for square format, the SQ6 or the SQ10. Uh, and these are all detailed, and the, the comparisons and stuff yeah, are referenced got, in Jim's review. If you can't feel like you can't remember the names of right. all these cameras on the top also, of your head, we also have a story of our favorite ten favorite instant cameras right now. Mm -hmm. And in that, we recommend ones at different price points for different types of use. Like there's the Lomo Instant Automatic Glass, which is an ultra wide mm -hmm. angle glass lens, which is probably the sharpest Instax Mini I've seen. But it's really it's more it's 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 for someone who's a big photo nerd, sure. not so much someone who is. I just want some, I want to take some party shots and have instant film and pass them out. Yeah, covering all the, the spectrum of uh, price ranges is yeah. uh, just what we can do best. It's, yeah, it's these, kind of recommended for everybody. The instant cameras range from around 70 to 300 for the mainstream mm -hmm. ones. There's a company called Mint out of Hong Kong, mm -hmm. which has, I haven't got a chance to use it yet. It's not out yet, but they have a Instax wide rangefinder coming out, but I think it's going to be like $1,000. So that's going to be like the so real your casual, your casual user sort of yeah you know yeah. so you know it's, so it's priced on iPhone right and the iPhone Max Eddie right <laughs> sorry right. I had to think about that joke all morning <laughs> I'm glad you got it out there yeah for got the it. public um, I think that's all then we have no more questions again Jim's full review of the uh, Polaroid Originals One Step Plus is on PCMag.com three and a half out of five um, full details full comparisons pros cons uh, comments about the film and the types of film and the features. All there, so if you didn't feel like you got it all, please check it out, there's plenty more in there. Um, Jim's gonna snap some photos of you, the viewer, and we'll be back again tomorrow, uh, same time, 10 a.m. Eastern, and thank you so much for watching.